Hello everyone. Today I'm in sunny Sydney and there's actually a heat wave and fortunately it's not too smoky here today because we've been surrounded by the fires which is so tragic to Mother Earth and I, I'm sure your heart is going out to all the plants. Oh my gosh, it's been reading every day as we wake up. It's just so devastating to hear the land lost and the animals and the people that are affected. All you can do is pray but also we need a lot of action right now that's what we're being called to yes to so for the listeners i'm with the lovely undine periton and she had an awakening when she was about 12 years old mm. would you like to tell us a bit more about that yeah absolutely i i mean i've always felt an in, immense connection to the earth i remember when i was younger i would take off all my clothes and I would lie in the rain and I would mum just let me sort of lie out there and do my thing and, and connect to the earth um, but it wasn't until I was a bit older that I had had what I now realize um, is called a shamanic illness which sort of was very serendipitous because my mum comes from a lineage of shamanic women and medicine women in Chile um, at Puche. Um, and this experience for me was 12 weeks of immense dizziness. I couldn't walk, I couldn't read, I couldn't stand up. And we went to doctors and we went to naturopaths and we did every single solitary thing we could think of um, and nobody knew what it was. And during that time, my dreams were technicolor and it was as if the plants were speaking to me. I would dream of vines coming through my veins and like the rocks talking and it was I mean, what I assume somebody on drugs would kind of be like if they were tripping, but obviously I was just a kid, so these dreams were incredible. And it wasn't until, you know, when I got better, I didn't really make the link. And it was only until later that I kind of realized, based on some other advice from people, that that's what I was sort of going through um, because I have a really innate knowledge of plants and plant medicine um, and it's really something that I'm incredibly passionate about. I think that's where that lineage has sort of blossomed in my life is, is through the knowledge and healing properties of plants. Wow, because I believe you were talking to people and giving them um, yeah. advice and giving the full botanical names of the yeah. plants which you wouldn't have even known. I know, I wouldn't have even known. And it, I, it, it's the way it sort of comes to me is it just sort of like channels right down and I'll be like, this person needs this. And then I'll kind of question myself a bit and then I'll look it up and I'll be like, that's exactly what they needed. Every single time that I have this sort of experience with plants, I'm in like the midst of developing an oil for personal use. And I just one day woke up and I was like, I've got the recipe. I know exactly what needs to be in it. And then looked everything up and went through books and I was like that's exactly what it needed to be so it is it's a very innate thing for me and I'm very honored that I have this wisdom I think it's incredible wow and thanks to your ancestors as well can you tell us a bit more about them well I have you know I was raised with my mother who's an incredible spiritual teacher and so for me spirituality was a very organic Thing. It was never labelled as like, oh, you're a spiritual person. It was just who we are because we woke up every day living our lives that way. Um, and, you know, through our ancestry, because my mum was born and raised in Hawaii, so she wasn't born in Chile where her, her lineage are from. Um, but I really, as we did the ancestry, which is amazing now with like the internet, we were sort of able to understand that this is where these people came from and the Mapuche people are primarily medicine women and shamans. And it's amazing when you can sort of have a solid foundation for what you're feeling. And I think that's what ancestry can give us is realizing that everything we feel connects us to somewhere thousands of years ago or a knowledge that is universal and in the cosmic web the life we live. And so I think I'm very, very grateful that I have that ancestry and it's I feel it very st strongly in my body. Fantastic mm -hmm. so you were 12 when this happened and mm -hmm. when did you continue giving people advice? Well I started reading a lot I wanted to sort of expand that knowledge and I think I I believe that you know food and nutrition and all of that is deeply connected to our spirituality and so for me, I was everything I did when I, I adore cooking. My mum and I are very good cooks. Um, but I wanted to experience 
the the depth and the incredible complexities of nature through food and so that's where I kind of started expanding on and seeing how I could incorporate beautiful plant medicines into everyday things and really connect to the earth and the elements and all of the flora and fauna that have come together to bring us this this bounty um, so I sort of I expanded on my knowledge by myself um, through reading and and the, the magic of the internet but every single day is you know it's a sort of you, you can, it's an opportunity to learn there's so much information out there from so many different cultures fantastic mm -hmm. and where has this led you to today well I haven't studied I'm not a naturopath um, so for me it's a mostly a personal exploration um, however you know if somebody is willing to listen I will give them little tidbits of advice um, there is a lot I want to do with the information as I said I'm developing a product but I would also love to study there's a, a few teachers um, like who have a scene knowledge and uh, Jewish knowledge and Kundalini knowledge that connects themselves to the food that has been channeled and I would love to study it with this man in Arizona and and really learn from his wisdom his name's Gabriel Cousins but for now while I'm still developing businesses and finding my feet, it is a personal exploration for me. Fantastic. Mm. And I believe you're going to be in Italy very soon yes. doing a retreat with your mum mm. and Zoe, the founder of co-founder of Wonder Retreats. Mm. What will be your role there? My role will be in the morning. I'm very passionate about Kundalini Yoga. That's another thing I, I would love to expand my, my knowledge in that area. So I'll be doing a lot of the chanting and, and leading the, the chants for their mantras and sound currents. And I'll offer, like I'll be offering, you know, talks on food and, and providing things that really facilitate and support the work that my mum, Sana, is teaching and also the work that Zoe brings to the world as well. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. I'm very excited. It's yeah. Really, Italy is one of my favourite places. The first time I went was with Zoe and we went to Praiano and it was an experience I've never felt so drawn to. It felt like such a mystical, you can feel the, you know, the mysticism in the land and the water and it was just so it just opened all of our hearts and it was just incredible. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And how did you meet Zoe? I met Zoe amazingly through Instagram. Um, so I'm always constantly in awe of how you can meet such incredible people on Instagram and through social media. And I had been planning a trip to London. This was in 2015. And at the time with my blog, I was interviewing really incredible uh, female business owners who I believe created alchemy in their lives and were able to transmute and shift the situation turning lead into gold that's really where I started my writing and my blog and I found Zoe on Instagram and you know her business is surrounded by gold yeah you got golden milk and turmeric is such a beautiful incredible product that I, I'm really passionate about as well and I found her on Instagram and I immediately felt a connection so I contacted her she started following me on Instagram as well and it was later that we realized that she had been one of my sister's best friends before I was born. My sister's six years older than me. And I'd never known her, but clearly that seed of that same, you know, immense knowledge about plants and the earth and knowing that she was around, like my mother and my sister, her, her childhood, we just connected instantly. And she's definitely like a sister. It's whenever she's here, it's like the most incredible thing and spending time with her as an incredible business owner. She's really, I aspire to be like her in business. I think she's amazing, but she just has such a profound knowledge and in such integrity. And I really love every aspect of her. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And tell us more about your blog. My blog, the, my blog's called The Alchemists and it's sort of taken a few different shifts now as I grow with the times. Um, I've created a brand as well called Alchemist, which is also constantly expanding. But The Alchemist for me was a way that I could communicate a very integral, like visceral knowledge that I have from my growing up and from my ancestry, that I could communicate it to people as a young person and realize that women are very complex creatures and you know a lot of people felt that if they liked fashion they couldn't be spiritual or if they liked music they they wouldn't like food or like nutrition and things like that 
And so I wanted to create a space where young women felt the inclusivity of spirituality and that you could be any person. You could be a fashion person who likes spirituality and wants to delve deeper into that. And it became just a place for me to write personal essays um, as an 18 year old. And it, the way it unfolded was really incredible. It just laid the groundwork for me as a writer. Um, I was working with numerous brands who commissioned me to write articles for them just based on what I wanted to write about, about spirituality and females. And I, I really am grateful for that experience because I think I, I live my life um, with fear that I'm constantly trying to overcome, which is my own sort of ego. I think we all do somewhat. But it was other people supporting me and believing in me and and saying you're incredible, you have this knowledge that's so innate that allowed me to get to where I am now. But as I said, we're constantly changing and evolving and that's what, that's what alchemy is, you know, you have to be able to transmute your situation and sort of go with the undulations of life in a very strong, sense, steadfast way. And I believe you also chose it because of your name, Dean. Yes, and this was another amazing sort of, the name The Alchemists just kind of dropped down from the heavens to me when I was trying to name my blog, because nothing seemed to fit, and I was like, one day I woke up and I said, Mom, I think I, I want it to be called The Alchemist, and she said, I love that name, and through then a little bit of research, I was able to ascertain that Paracelsus, who was a famous alchemist, he gave the names of all the elemental creatures that sort of encapsulated air, water, fire, and earth. And the name he gave to water was Undine. And so it was a really serendipitous sort of thing. And I just knew in my heart then that the name was right, which is why I've sort of kept going with it with my brand as well, Alchemiste, just in French. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you'll be on the doorstep of France very I soon. I know, I'm very, very excited. I love it there as well. I would love to go to the south of France as well, which is, we have been once before, we went to beautiful ruins there, and it was just such a, you know, you can feel like how rich the, the history is there. It's really amazing. Yes, mm. well, I'm sure with all your strong, energetic ancestry inside you yeah. going with the flow yes. is so important definitely it is so have you got any tips that you would give to young women yeah you know young girls in particular absolutely i it's a hard one because i feel like we live in a world where this concept of self-love is thrown out in because it is important but oftentimes we don't know what love means especially to love ourselves and so my mum has always taught me that you don't have to feel self-love for yourself in every moment, but you can like yourself and you can choose these things about yourself that, that you want to fall in love with and you want to expand upon. I think for young people, we need to come to a place where we accept our complexities and we accept that not everything's going to be palatable to everybody and that's okay. But those things, if we are accepting of them, will lay the groundwork for our future and, and finding our purpose, which is like what we're doing with the retreat. Being able to truly feel into your body and if you want to go lie out naked in the rain, do things like that and, and cook and get your hands dirty, these sorts of things might seem simplistic, but it's those really deep connective practices that get us to a point where we can like ourselves and we can be accepting and we can find the lover we want and we can have the career we want and things like that. But as I said, you know, I'm 23, I'll be 24 in a week and this is something I'm still working on. I'm still trying to find my feet in this world because it's incredibly complex. There's so many roads that we can take at any given time and so much advice that we can, you know, take heed and listen to. But I, I truly think we're, there is, it's an amazing time to be a young woman because people are really wanting to wake up and they are really wanting to stand strong in their divine femininity and use that as a tool for growth. So, I mean, I try not to give too much advice because I'm still learning, but I like to sort of share what I know, you know, that sort of thing. Thank you, Thank because you. I know you're incredibly beautiful young lady, beautiful on the inside Thank and you. out. Thank and, you. you know, today we have so much pressure to mm. be like a model. Mm. And I was just wondering what your friends were like. Yeah. You know, did they think you were weird because of your... The way I was sort of brought up? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
to be totally honest it was only I'm very grateful for my parents splitting up because I was able to have context for an emotional capacity that I didn't have before because we had sort of a you know a sheltered life even though it was very spiritual and I think that my friends didn't really like my school friends didn't really know that this was a part of me because I didn't share it because I didn't I, I kind of I think in a way I thought everybody was like that and then it was only through doing my writing and speaking with people who were like you know this isn't normal what you've brought been brought up with your mother your knowledge isn't normal for most people so I think you know it's now people are discovering this part of me and that I might have you know hidden a little bit not intentionally before but the real magic in my life happens when I share it and this is what I'm realizing now is that to share all of these great parts of you is what allows other people to do the same and to grow into themselves the way they want to um, and live their lives the way they want to so every day I'm working on sharing a little bit more fantastic yeah. and when did your parents split up and was your father a spiritual person as well uh, so my parents split up when I was 16 or 17 and so I was finishing school at the time my dad's an incredible um, person because in his own way he's he's got an incredible brain he's like a genius but his knowledge comes from a more uh, sort of quantum physics like a very logical way um, even though he is a spiritual person. I learnt probably, I think I've got a good balance of my mum and my dad. I've got a lot of my dad's very logical thinking brain, but all of the heart and sort of immense knowledge that my mum has. If only a tiny skerrick, I would be so blessed to have that. Um, I think I'm more like my mum, to be totally honest, though. I really respect my dad's wisdom in his own way but for me I think I need to do a li little bit more of understanding that life isn't as linear as we think it is um, and, and science isn't always going to give us what we need when it comes to personal growth. Wow and it's so wonderful to chat with someone so enlightened at such oh, a very young thank age you so much. and what are your views on 2020? It's been a funny time here in Australia um, because of what's been going on with the fires for so long. I think everyone's sort of come into the new year with a, it's almost felt a bit anticlimactic because you, we've been trying to celebrate and, and be giving and be grateful for all that we have whilst communities burn and whilst we lose half a million flora uh, animals, you know, from the fires that could go extinct. And so at the moment I'm trying to have a practice of really being compassionate. I think the only thing that's really going to create change is, yes, this passion and this that people are feeling, because people are feeling very angry, and, and that can be very valuable. But I think we also need to have compassion, and we also need to open our hearts, and that's why it's been really incredible these past couple of weeks with the fires, because people are emptying their pockets to give. Um, and that's been, I don't think I've ever started a year with such a stark contrast to the year before. For me, 2020 holds a lot of excitement, but also it's really pushing me to step into who I am and, and my birthright. Um, and that can be a lot of pressure for a young person as well, because there is a lot I want to do and want to accomplish. And I have very high standards for myself, but I also, I need to do it with a level head. Um, and with an open heart and no fear. And so that's always something I'm working on every New Year's. I'm like, I don't want to have this fear. I need to step past this time. And so that's what I'm really, 2020, I want to be a very strong year of growth for the world. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and, <laughs> and myself a little bit. <laughs> and obviously you got amazing teachers around you, mm -hmm. like your mum and yeah. Zoe for yeah. the retreat. And, Absolutely. And it looks like you're doing your homework on the internet with finding your kundalini yeah. teacher yes and for me i find you know a lot of people need balance like mm -hmm. i'm in australia now and it's heartbreaking mm -hmm. you know goosebumps when you were yeah. talking about it and i feel communities come together yeah. to help one another That's and amazing. you know they've always said in australia to we have to get rid of the old to bring on the new. It's yeah. just tragic that it's Had so to widespread. Like this and, yeah. and sometimes, you know, sometimes we need as people a real 
stark contrast and something as scary as this to be able to create create the change environmentally and from a political perspective we do we need to be pushed and I think now people are realizing that we can't just sit on our laurels and we can't just wait for somebody to speak up for the land and mother earth we've got to realize that it's happening now and that we have to use that fire energy harness it for change for ourselves I totally agree yeah. and going back to a blog and the internet because I personally think that needs to be some balance because mm -hmm. a lot of people are addicted to their telephones, Absolutely. to social media and yeah. if they don't get the likes that they're seeing, know. you know, so we have to have this we balance. Have, yeah. So I think you're a wonderful example of having your blog mm. and also doing work with nature yes you know yes absolutely and i think it can be like instagram truly can be harvard um like it can be used for good if we choose to to see it that way i try to be very level about it because i do do it for work as well but the amazing people that i've met there are so many like-minded people and it makes the world feel a little bit smaller when you realize that they're all there at the you know the swipe of a finger yeah. um but a, a balance is the most important. I think that's what we're all having to realise is we've got to be level about it. That middle road, the sort of Buddhist middle road. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what is your blog called? So my blog's called The Alchemists um, and then my brand is called Alchemist, which is going to be expanding to a sort of complete lifestyle brand. Right now it's just clothes that are made and blessed here in Sydney that are all saged and sort of palisantoed before I send them off from eco fabrics and in small quantities because I really believe that's the future of fashion but it will be moving into more of the plant medicine sort of angle this wow. year which is very exciting. So are you designing the clothes yourself? Yes yeah I do so for me I adore clothing from a sort of artistic expression I think that it truly can if we are not using it to solely identify ourselves, it can be something that is a beautiful self-expression. But again, it has to be level. And so I wanted to create something that was conscious for conscious people who, who gravitate towards it. Yeah, using dead stock fabrics that I've sourced in Sydney and then made here by a small team of people. And it's got little blessings sewn into every garment. So it's what I would want if I was a consumer. I would want to buy something from a brand like that. So I wanted to make it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for thank making you. our world a better place thank to live so in. Much. And your wonderful words of advice and all these lovely young ladies around the world that you're yeah. headline. Thank you so thank much. You. So wonderful speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you.